The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and at amazon.com. Here is a question I received from Cheryl. Hi, Dr. Kenner. I had a, a miscarriage a week ago. I was eight weeks pregnant, but the fetus stopped growing at six weeks. I was shocked, but I got over it that same day. Four days after the procedure, I started feeling sad and distracted from my daily activities. I was in a bad mood for the day, and I did not want to make conversation with anyone. I didn't even smile. The next day, I was back to my normal self. Then, for the next three days, I was crying uncontrollably, not in the mood for conversations, avoiding people. I am now extremely sad. I thought I got over the fact that I lost my baby, but it seems like I haven't. Please tell me what I'm feeling. Am I depressed or is this grief? Thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl, there could be several factors causing you to feel sad. One of them doesn't have anything to do with thoughts. It's hormonal. Your body is readjusting. I mean, you were eight weeks pregnant, and the hormones are bouncing around. And that can contribute to some sadness. And I recall that when, uh, in my younger days, I used to burst into tears once a month. And it could be the most minor thing that would set me off. And my husband would look at me and he says, oh, you're about to get your period, aren't you? And when he said that, I w- we would both either laugh or uh, it would calm me down because I realized that something hormonal happened to me. Hormones are not non-significant. They can have an effect on your moods. So I didn't let myself go crazy when I realized it was only hormonal. A second factor is that you could be going through grief if you really, really wanted this baby and were, you know, imagining or maybe even buying some baby clothes or knitting or getting excited about having a baby, then you're going through grief and you need to let your mind process it. It's not that you're in a major depression depression if you cry. It's that you need to go through a natural, normal grief process. And you could be crying for for days, you know, on and off, maybe weeks, uh, just letting your mind put the pieces together that what you thought you might have, a baby, uh, fairly soon, uh, within a couple of months, is not going to happen. And you, you, you let, need to let your mind readjust. However, A third factor that is causing you to feel bummed out may not have to do with hormones or not with grief, but what you are thinking and what images are going through your mind, Cheryl. If you think... Hey, I got to interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills. 30 seconds, that's it. A very quick ad and then Alan will be back. Romance. Oh, I wish guys knew more about what we want from a relationship. Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Ah, here it is. The Selfish Path to Romance. A serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Hmm, The Selfish Path to Romance. That is interesting. If you think, well... I lost the fetus. It wasn't a baby yet. And, you know, that's nature's way of saving me from having to carry to term a fetus that failed to grow. I can try again when the time is right. If you think that, you're not going to suffer that much. But if you think anxiety-producing or sad thoughts, then you may suffer needlessly. If you have a bunch of what's called stinking thinking. What if thoughts and what if people don't usually say what if something good happens. They usually say, oh my God, what if something negative happens? So here are just a a sampling of some what negative what ifs. And if you're having them, you need a method. And I'll tell you that in a moment of how to address them. What if this is God's way of punishing me that I lost my baby? To me, Ellen, that is pure nonsense, uh, and you need a way to see that it's it's just a natural phenomena that happened. Uh, the second, another question you might have is, what if I can never carry a baby to term? I lost this one. 
That is catastrophic thinking. You don't have the facts to support that. Many people lose one child, and then they go on to have healthy children. So why not assume that that's the case? What if you're beating yourself up? What if you say something a little off, like, oh my God, what if the pizza with the anchovies that I ate stopped my baby from growing? That is total unearned guilt. Here's another thought. What if my husband thinks I'm inferior because I lost his child? Well, first of all, it was both of your children. It, was, it wasn't even a child yet. It was a fetus. And that is stinking thinking. Instead, think that he'd be supportive. And, you, and hopefully he is. Uh, what if You might have the thought, what if they find out I'm relieved that I didn't have a baby? Baby, I wasn't ready for it and I'm feeling so guilty. If that's accurately the case, then you can allow yourself to feel guess what? Some relief. And then if you're not ready for a child, you know, just figure out how to take better precautions going into the future. Now here is a real, if you really want to guarantee that you'll get, feel depressed, here's the following thought, Cheryl. What if I'm sinking into a deep depression? (laughs) Well, if you have those images that you're sinking into a deep depression, uh, you're going to Look for it everywhere in your mind. You're going to pull up negative file folders and you're going to paint your internal canvas in your mind very negatively, very dark and gloomy. So you need a method to get rid of that thought. What if I'm sinking into a deep depression? Well, what if you're not? So you need a method to examine your thoughts uh, that are underlying your tears and your sadness. So there is good news, Cheryl. You are having some normal days. So I would just go ahead and assume that it's hormonal and maybe some grief uh, and possibly some relief. And you can talk to your doctor about maybe something he can give you to help you a little bit with any hormonal changes or maybe you can look into some supportive therapy if you're going through grief or dealing with some stinking thinking. There's a great book if you want to learn to introspect better. It's Mind Over Mood and you'd be able to take those negative emotions, any anxiety or any depressed feelings and um, talk to yourself a little better. They've got wonderful skills in that book, Mind Over Mood and that's at my website, Dr. Kennedy com. And one last thing, Cheryl, you want to remind yourself of your better moments. Remember I said your internal canvas. Think of painting your better moments in life, your good friends, hobbies you enjoy, your values, the things that make your life special. Friends, maybe a job, maybe a good relationship, uh, maybe even start exercising if you're not doing that. And that is going to help you uh, reduce any feelings of depression along with reducing the stinking thinking. So uh, that should help you cope a whole lot better with the miscarriage. And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner. There's a big snake in the plane, Jacques! Oh, that's just my pet snake, Reggie! I hate snakes, Jacques! I hate them! Come on, show a little backbone, will ya? And some of you may remember that. That's from Indiana Jones. And do you have a phobia? Are you afraid of heights or maybe spiders? Or are you afraid of elevators? Are you afraid of going in elevators? Or maybe of snakes? I know my son had the opposite problem. He was not afraid of snakes. In fact, I had to get over any fear of snakes because as a little tyke, he'd go out in the garden and he'd bring back in some garter snakes. And we had to put them in Tupperware containers and go out and get crickets for them and get them some food and then the, they multiplied. We were away on vacation and I guess the bigger garter snakes uh, uh, got a little romantic and had a little, a lot of babies and what do you know? <laughs> we had snakes galore. My son was studied them. He did projects on them for school so I did not have a snake phobia and neither did he and um, we had a lot of fun with them. But many people have phobias, and it can really mess up your life if you're afraid to go in public places or if you're afraid of public speaking. Uh, If you have a social phobia, uh, it it can really mess up your life. For more Dr. Kenner podcasts, go to drkenner.com, and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and co-author Dr. Edwin Locke, who's world famous for his theories in goal setting. 
It is important to introspect and to do so with the attitude that it's exciting and fascinating to come to understand yourself. What is the worst thing you can discover? That you have mistaken ideas or poor thinking methods, and these can be corrected. Many individuals don't know how to introspect effectively and efficiently, but at least they make honest attempts to understand their emotions, and they make some headway. Even keeping a journal when one experiences unsettled emotions or talking things through with a trusted friend or if needed a therapist helps with self-understanding you can download chapter one for free by going to drkenner.com and you can buy the selfish path to romance at amazon.com